I've yeah. got, I'm going to cut to the chase, right? Run right in. Because this is what this is the dog seeing the rabbit right now, and <laughs> I know this is what everybody wants to know because we've established that it's it's all about patience, timing. Yeah. It's all yeah. about your your handshakes. All about your personality. It's all about the 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 the, the, the presence. That's right. Yeah. The biggest question I think everyone wants to know is how do you build a mm. twenty year standing brand? Killer Killer Official.com 101.4 FM 24 hours a day all genres. Next FM. UK. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or rather good morning, whatever situation you are in the world. It's a pleasure to have you in. This is the Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be. Um, and yo, this Zoom thing is really sorting me out. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings, of course. All the usual. This is like the regular business. The only difference is we're going all across the world in all different genres and directions. This is our street culture first day. So I thought we'd take it that street culture further. There is a... There is a Oh God, where to begin? 25 years of a street culture brand is nothing to be sniffed at, especially in the UK. Uh, and when it comes to aerosol and uh, this right here, for those of you who are listening and not watching, this is a junglist movement mm-hmm. t-shirt that I'm donning. We have the man himself. Over 25 years, he's brought the arts and the brand to the cultures. And he goes by the name of Leke. <laughs> How are we doing, Aerosol HQ? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, bro. You know what it is. A to the S. <laughs> yeah, fun. man, we're on it. We're on it. It's a pleasure to have you on, brother. We did the uh, we did the profile piece for the live show, which is still doing the circles and the rounds now. But, uh, I mean, it was such a pleasure. You did 25 years in style. Probably one of the last gigs that actually happened in Fabric, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It actually was. It was actually 20 years. I mean, we have been going over like 25 years and stuff, obviously, but... The event was officially for 20, uh, you got me going at that, for 20 years <laughs> of um, aerosol.co.uk. Because, uh, you know, the, you know, obviously the, the website, we've been, we've had our own website since 2000. So yeah. it's kind of, it's celebrating that, you know, the first time we got online was uh, 2000, it's aerosol, you know, .co.uk.com. So we wanted to, you know, um, push that you know but obviously the brand's been going on way longer than that i mean i started really? making stuff i was making stuff in 93 94 you know and i was doing stuff for soul to soul shop around 96 97 what uh, that's uh, mad uh, yeah i was printing up my own shirts i was doing african prints and then i was taking them down to the soul to soul shop and um selling them in the basement you know i carried on doing that for a while and then the shop closed and then it became zoom records and they liked my stuff so I carried on selling the Zoom records, and that was all during the nineties, mid 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 nineties, right to the ending of the nineties. You know, so I really went wow. in in two thousand. I was like, right, we set up as a proper business, registration, the whole shebang. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you really came up through the ranks of like, yeah, yeah, pretty the much. raw from the dirt, mate. You know, this is um, it's built from the ground up for sure. You know, I mean, I was. I was learning like everyone else, you know, I was raving, going out to clubs, watching what people's wearing, you know, ask Normsky, he'll tell you I was an annoying little shit. I wanted to follow him everywhere. <laughs> What's that, Norm? What's that do? How'd you get that? How, what? Fish eye lens? Is there such a thing? How'd you get that round effect? That's amazing. I, I want to know what fish eye lens is, you know what I mean? I would yeah. go to the studio, I'd be, he had a spot in, um, above, uh, what was it, Free 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 in Old Street? You know, oh, wow. So, yeah, Old Street days, yeah, early Old Street days. Then, yeah. That would have been like around 95, 96, I guess. And, you know, I'd go to spot all the time, going through his images, going through his nags. What's this do? What's that do? You know, I was so into the culture, you know, and I was like, you know, Gomsky was a legend to me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you're not the only one that clings to those sorts of, that calibre of Norm back in the day. I was exactly the same, dude. Like, Definitely. He, he played Gormsky, a big part like, of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know For real. I mean? You know, I mean, he was like the first ones we could see on the TV that you could be like, oh, he's just like me. He's into yeah. graffiti. He's into skating. He's into art. He has a cool hairstyle. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's I want to be like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. he was like a role model to a lot of artists like myself, you know? And Total pioneer, man. That, Total utter pioneer. Thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not just one thing. It's the whole culture, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So. 
yeah, and sure. that's what that's the thing a lot of people uh, miss, especially now where cultures can be. I, I don't know, you know, without sounding pompous or in any which way about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love, I, I love everything, and it's yeah. very rare you find a spot or a place or a person yeah. that embodies that quite as uniquely as yeah. Norm. And yeah. I feel like your brand also adapts that. You like yeah, the whole absolutely. aerosol movement. It yeah. really adapts to the climate of culture, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what it's about because it's like I've always been from the get-go. I was always like, you know what? I don't want to be pigeonholed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I love hip-hop. I love drum and bass. I love soul. I'm, I was yeah. into the whole acid jazz movement, you know, the whole Giles Peterson thing, Jamaraquai, mm-hmm. Darlene yeah. Arno. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, Young Disciples. I loved all of that stuff. Do you know crazy. what I mean? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, I crazy. I also love the reggae and I love the ska and I love, you know, the, you know I, I always used to go to Jao Shaka at, at yeah. the Dome. You know what I mean? With my boys. Yeah. You know, we'd go to that before we'd go to a jungle event, you know? So For sure. Yeah, we'd go there, do about a couple of hours at Jashaka, you know, listen to dub, you know, having a good smoke, getting embracing the sound, and then we'd go on to like a mad jungle club, like a uh, mm-hmm. AWOL, a, a Paradise Club or something, or a Labyrinth in Dalston or or Blue Note, whatever it was, you know what I mean? So for me, it was always like, I just loved embracing the different sounds and I wanted to create a brand that was more specifically known as a lifestyle brand. Not yeah, yeah. Just, uh, because everyone knows me for the junglist movement, but there's a lot more to me than that. You know what I mean? So for me, it's always been about creating a brand that's that's embedded in London culture. And that involves yeah. drum and bass, that hip hop, that, that hip hop movement, that soul, that whole neo soul stuff that was coming through, that whole jazz piece of zone. Acid mm-hmm. jazz, you know what I mean? The dub, all of that. I loved all of that. So I wanted my brand to have, you know, an expression of a bit of all of that. You know what I mean? So it's not just just one specific thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I say, for, I mean, I think I've known you for at least 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> first off, <laughs> first off, like, you, you know, <laughs> you were like, so you were already established when I got into the scene. Yeah. And I think thanks to your your uh, diversity in the way that you work with right. the climate and you're yeah. able to mold and you know develop different arms to your brand this you you made it you you almost made it just a given that when people come you know i put you up there with dark and cold back in the day as well yeah it's and do you know what i mean it, it was almost like inherent in the dna of anybody starting up in in the urban world over in the uk you yeah. lead by example and absolutely you, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You had already set that yeah. example, that bar yeah. has been, has been yeah. put up. Very true, because the thing is, for me, from the get-go, I already had an understanding of what I wanted to do and yeah. what what I was into in terms of what, you know, what picked up my interest. I mean, I was fortunate because I was my we were young. We got into it really young. You gotta remember, I got into rave scene when I was like 15, 16. You yeah. know what I mean? I was in Harlow College. And I make my boys and we formed our crew, mixed race crew. And we was really into the culture. You know, we were raving in the fields and then we was doing all the London stuff. You know what I mean? And then, you know, when I moved back to London after studying at Harlow College, right. junk was massive then in London. It was all about AWOL and do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. um, you know, loads of, excuse me, all this, loads of jungle events that were happening. So I came back at the right time. And just at that time, you know, my boys got signed to Moving Shadow. I got into London College of Fashion because I was moving more into that direction. I was more into graphic design and illustration, things like that. Yeah. So I managed to get into London College of Fashion, which I didn't even think I'd get in, to be honest, because it was like a portfolio thing, you know. But I got in and they got signed to Moving Shadow at the same time. So we kind of like, you know, things started happening at, at, at a point where it was like the scene was kind of moving in a different direction where it was like, you know, rave culture was becoming mainstream, you know, artists, big artists like Goldie were getting signed, Ronnie Size, things like that was happening around that time, you know? So, so for me, I've just naturally grown up in the scene. So I started from early, you know what I mean? I was like 15, 16 when I was raving, do you know what I mean? So mad, I mad. Up in the culture. And, yeah. um, and it just so happens the people that I move with, their leaders, in their own field, you know what I mean? They're pioneers yeah. in their own right. You know, they were like one of the first artists to sign on Movie Shadow. Mixed Race is my crew, you know what I mean? Which is right. me, Dev Paradox, DJ Tracks, um, DJ Nucleus, 
Dan Monk, who does the Jungle List now. We was like a collective. Do you know what I mean? That was our crew. It's just crazy. It's it's actually. Do you feel like some of it is just a, a combination of luck and yeah. uh, good yeah. good energy? Like if your heart's in the right place, you yeah, know. Yeah. You, you got to be at the right place at the right time, Lee. You know that. Nothing. You can't just sit at home and hoping shit's going to happen. I mean, we're in this we're in this generation of like sitting by a computer and sending loads of tunes out to this man, that man, and this. That Don't part. know what you mean. Don't yeah. know what you mean. <laughs> but for our culture. When we was coming up as kids, it was about going out there. We need to go to Black Market. Let's yeah. wait for him at Black Market Records yeah. and we'll give him the dub then. Or yeah, we need yeah, 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 yeah. the house. And we need to cut this on vinyl so we can play it uh, when we go out this weekend, when we when we get booked for a PA or whatever. It was more it was more hands-on, you know what I mean? Oh, shit, I know so what much fun. Mean, like you know? you, Even now, to a degree, bro, like when you have an idea, the fact that you can implement it straight away. That's it. It's, fucking, it's so much fun. It is. It's, 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 that's where technology comes into it, which is a good thing. I mean, you yeah. said, that, oh, it's, you know, it's, but I think, you know, it's a lot of it's being at the right place at the right time and being able to actually do what you want to do. Like actually have something to show and say, you know what, this is what I've done so far. And I think with the right support from people, I can take it here. Yeah, but you for can't real. just go there with a blank paper and say, yeah, this is it. You know, it's yeah. like, what is it? You need to show us something. We need to feel it. And then we can buy into it. You know what I mean? So, but you've got yeah. to start somewhere. You know what I mean? That's my point. And you've got to be hands-on as well. That's right. You've got to be, your handshake's got to be as uh, distinctive um. and <laughs> as your fucking business card, right? Definitely, for sure. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I've got, I'm going to cut to the chase, right? Run right in. Because this is what, this is the dog seeing the rabbit right now. And <laughs> I know this is what everybody wants to know. Because we've established that it's, it's all about, patience timing yeah, it's all definitely. about your, your handshakes all about your personality it's all about the the the, 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 the presence that's right the yeah biggest question i think everyone wants to know is how do you build a mm. 20 year standing brand yeah i got you <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a difficult one isn't it i mean you, you gotta remember we've outlived all our distributors all the people that we sell to from hmv to tower records and you know, uh, or even the, the hip hop shops and, you know, the little independent shops, they're all gone now. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that makes it a lot harder. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to actually, I mean, anyone can come up with a product. That's a piece of piss, but selling it is the hardest part. And, mm -hmm. uh, I honestly believe that, you know, for me, I could design all day long, you know what I mean? But it don't mean shit unless someone's going to be like, you know what? Here's 25 quid. I like that. I want that. Then it's worthless. It's just mm -hmm. another design. It's what you do with it that takes it to that level. Now, for me, I always knew I had to think outside the box because distribution would be an issue. What people don't understand is the retail game is very competitive. In fact, it's more competitive than the music industry because in retail, you're competing with independent streetwear brands and you're competing with high-end stuff like Off-White, Jordan, mm. or this or that. You know, yeah. so there's more of a, it's a bigger market, you know what I mean? And there's more competition and you have to stand out more like as a pro because it's like it's a brand and you have a product whereas if you're a musician it's like you can go on the strength of your music and what you do and yeah. people will stick by you and be like yep that's for me you know but if you've got a brand and you've got a bunch of designs where it's a, it's different to actually last and actually be in a position where you're consistently selling because mm -hmm. if you're not selling you ain't gonna move and i have to be selling for the brand to move so it's about what you're going to do that's going to keep your brand selling so you can move and be relevant. So I worked out really earlier on that online would be the way to go because of how things were going towards the end of the 90s and stuff in terms of how music was changing from vinyl to more CDs, from CD to MP3, whatever, you know what I mean? So I worked out really earlier on that I had to have my own situation and look at it as a virtual shop it's not physical, but it's virtual. Where Damn, someone, so you were you were one of I the first that. generation yeah. Google I, search. Mate, when I was on, I got online with an e-commerce store in 2000, right? <laughs> People were so scared to put their details in. People were not, were so afraid. They were not going to put their credit card in. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm not giving you my details. People were really paranoid of that. So wow. there was a lot of people hacking the site as well. I had like a, I had a website that was a web store that was worth 15 grand easily, a Magento site. It was real corporate. There was a lot of fancy stuff. It's yeah. more 
more detail to what I've got now. I'm on Shopify right now, but then my store was a really advanced video stuff, everything. You know what I mean? But yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people were afraid to actually buy online in those days. You know, it was, and uh, you know, fortunately, PayPal came in. I was one of the first people to get on PayPal around 2001. Yeah, mm. PayPal came in 2001, and I was like, yeah, yeah that's for me. I'm going to use that. that. As my main payment method, because people are shitting themselves with this credit card thing, you know? So the PayPal thing helped that, you know what I mean? So yeah. I jumped on it straight away. I was on PayPal by 2001. And it's basically, I by then, I was like, right, this is where you can buy my stuff if you want it. If you're really about it and you really represent the culture, then you go there and you buy what you want and we'll send it to you. It's that simple. So it's important to have an infrastructure set up where people can get what they need to get and not be messed about, you know? And I, I think that's really important. And I think that's what's kept me moving now because I worked that out really earlier on that I had to have my own infrastructure and my own platform. And, I feel like it's like super yeah. important to be ahead of the curve with a lot of these things. It sounds like you were well ahead of the curve. Yeah, you have to. You have to. And also, I think I was really influenced by a lot of what was going on in America as well. You know, the brands that I was uh, affiliating myself to, were no, there was no brands in the UK that I related to. I related more to, you know, Fat Farm, Echo, Mecca, you know, Carcana Eye. Yeah, oh, fire. So I came through that generation, nice urban streetwear, you know, the 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 the, the real core, you know, um, yep. brand that represented that culture, that hip hop culture, that baggy, that fit, you know what I mean? So I was more influenced with that kind of stuff. I didn't see anything in the UK that influenced me. I'm sure there was, but at the time, that was my, my whole thing was I want to do a UK version of what those guys are doing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? And you're I probably like, you're probably before Dark and Cold, but Dark and Cold yeah. was a shop that was in the centre of yeah, uh, London in Soho. And often I, I felt like the, the shop and what was inside the shop took yeah. more precedence than the brand they were make, making. Would I be right because in saying that? Was, because they were stocking so many hot brands as well that were well-established and well-known. Do you know what I mean? They, were, they had Mecca. They were one of the first to get academics, you know? They were on that real quick. You know, a, a lot of brands that were popping off, they got them and they were really, they sold my stuff, you know what I mean? At one point, they sold my stuff, they sold Wally stuff, they did a bunch of other one or two UK designers. But I think their stuff suffered because there were so many of that other hot brands that they were importing from America. And that was what what it was for most of the kids. It was like, well, where can I get my academics jeans? And it's like, they had that. So they were going to go specifically for academic students when really and truly should be like well you know this is a dark and cold shop we do actually have our own brand as well but i just feel like they pushed more of the american stuff than their own which mm. is what I, that's from my point of view so I, I think that might have affected you know the mindset because a lot of people wanted the american stuff you know because it was popping and they had that you know they had the links to get that but it was also mm. like a price point as well which is what people forget you know it's like when you're dealing in retail your price point is really important on, based on who you target and your audience and who's going to buy into your product and why they're going to spend an extra 20 pounds instead of what they normally get. Or, you know what I mean? So it's like a talk price, to me about plan. price. Talk to me about a price plan. That's, that's, a, that's a bit of a new buzzword there. Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, for me, I was like, right, when I first started, I was like, I'm going to put myself like not at the top and not at the bottom, but somewhere in the middle. So it's still high end, but not cheap, but still affordable, right? Hmm. And and I've had the same price since. The entry level to my brand is twenty five pounds, right? And it's always been that. It's it's, it's still twenty five pounds today. I started at twenty five pounds for a t shirt, right? And I started there for a reason because I I wanted to fit in between those other price points. You know what I mean? It's a streetwear brand. Um, but it's also a high-end streetwear brand because of what it represents, its heritage and its cultural reference to the game. So it's like most T-shirts at the time were like going for 15. When I started, they, theirs was 15, that's 15, and mine was 25. I mean, I remember like one of the first accounts I had was like Black Market. You, you talk about dark and cold. Black Market was next door, as you know. And yeah. they were one of the first people to actually stock my stuff, you know? And I remember at the time, they had a bunch of other brands and the, their shirts were like 15 to 18.50 was the highest price point for the shirts they were selling. But mine was 25. Mine was the, mine was the most expensive. 
But there was a reason for that because I wanted to separate myself, you know, mm. as in terms of what I was doing as a brand. Because one, I spend a lot more on my products. You have a sleeve label, you know. You, back then, you had a back print, you had a front print. It's um, the the print. Yeah, ma'am. It's not flat. It's raised. We put a bit of puff into it to give it that three D feel. All this stuff costs money, you know. We put it in a bag. That's a see through bag. That costs money too. It's got a label in the neck. That costs money. It's got a label on the sleeve. That costs money. Sometimes we have a back print. Like this has got a back print, as you can see. Right? So oh, that's fire. Like, you just see the front, you think it's just that, but there's a back <laughs> print. You know what I mean? So, but they all add, it all adds up. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, all the different techniques, they all cost money. Even just the putting the puff into the ink to make it raise, that treatment, it's a special treatment, you know, and I pioneered that from early for the jungle movement stuff. So that's where the price point comes into it because it's really important based on the product that you're serving to the consumer, mm-hmm. how it's put together and why you justify it being 25 instead of 15 that my man's used to paying. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So mm. from earlier on, I always wanted to separate myself and be like, you know what, this is not, this is not a cheap thing. This is like a heritage brand. It's 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 more about exclusivity than just you know mass production because we don't do mass production. It's never been about that. It's always been about quality over quantity. Yeah, you know? for sure, for yeah. sure. Do you think there's like a? Hmm, do you think people actually? I mean, I I do. Did you think people actually think deep, as deep as that? Because the brand itself, it no. holds its own, but, make, but, but you know, they don't notice the little tags. They don't notice all these details. No, they don't give a shit about that. They're just like, you know what? I saw that shirt, Human Traffic, and I want one, and I like that. Or I saw that shirt, or oh, I saw that man's shirt wearing it, and I like it, and I'm, I want to try and find it. And I'm, you know, like a digger. It's like you hear a track, and you're like, oh, man, that track's banging. I wonder if I can mm. find it on Discog, or is it online? And you start trying to search it, the one that goes, duh, duh, duh. so it's like you, you buy based on the fact that you're buying into a culture, you know? This yeah, yeah. Is, it's like, yo, this is what I'm about. And I want to show people that this is what I'm about, right? Yeah, and then yeah, there's sure. the other side. There's the other side that, like, I don't give a shit about drum bass. I don't know what that is. I listen to rock. I just like the design. You know, I'm just into decks. I just like techniques. So, you know what I mean? So I'm buying it for that. I don't care whether it's drum bass or jungle or this. I just like the design. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of yeah. like that, you know? People, I mean, brands like Balenciago and Nike yeah. and things like that, people, do people... I'm not saying they don't have any cultural reference points, but I yeah. just like when you buy into something that is so deeply rooted in culture. That's right. I don't think people realize yeah. how much you're helping the culture. You're, yeah, they don't you're endorsing it, it and yeah. you're wearing yeah. it and you're yeah. part, like, th- yeah. these are the, these are the <laughs> yeah. foundations, right? Yeah. It's important because it's like, I think that's where we get wrapped up. You know what I mean? Because it's like, Oh, you know, like people want to buy, I want the Yeezys. I want this. I want that because it's trend. It's popular. Cause I've seen Batman rocking it. Cause it's like, you know, whatever. But I, I honestly believe it's so important that when you actually buy a product that you buy it for the right reasons, because mm-hmm. a lot of people, they're like, you know, they, they'll come on my site and be like, Oh, look at me in my jungle smooth shirt, but it's a fake. They're wearing a fake. And it's like, and they know it's a fake but yet they still want to be a part of it. Now, you know that's a fake because you've seen my site and I know you've seen what I do. So you know that design is completely different to what I'm dealing with, but yet you want to big it up. Yeah? So that's what I don't like. This is why you have to be knowledgeable of of what you're paying for. Yeah. Where, what it's about and what it represents and how it represents you. You can't come And, and you, with... you're a shining example of that, yeah, yeah that bootleg culture. Yeah. Well, I know a culture is just a fucking, it's just... Yeah, it is a culture, unfortunately, because it's, it's a poison, man. It's but, uh, of... you know, well, you know, brands like Boy, Boy, Boy Better Know, for instance, you know, yeah. like, they're now, another shining example of all of a sudden on supermarket stalls, you see fake brands and knockoffs of their... And you're, I'm just, I was dumbfounded when yeah. I was seeing things like that. And, uh, and yeah, to... To my own admission, junglist movement, it's such it's it was there as well. Yeah. And it was such yeah. a I remember Dalston, it was Dalston Market. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah everything. I'm talking about. Yeah, like, of course. You, yeah, and, and, and and what point do you like, dude? You, like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, it's mad because <laughs> your brand has got to that point where yeah. it's so culturally recognized. Yeah. And like hats off to you. Thank and you. Then, Thank you. Oh, on it's the, the gift and side, you're dealing with that shit. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, when you do something, it's like, and it becomes popular. It's like, I mean, you know, I remember when my um, 
back in the early days, my, my, you know, one of the big, obviously the biggest thing was the human traffic. But after that, I had a bunch of other different things going on. And one of the first mainstream things I got was getting the clothes onto in skins. Skins approached me at the nice. time for E4. And they'd seen the human traffic thing and they'd done their research of what I was doing and they really loved my stuff. And they were like, look, we want to feature one of your T-shirts in one of the scenes. Da, da, da. You know, that's cool, no problem, you know? Did it, it was wicked. And all of a sudden I got slagged off by everyone. I was just, everyone's like, oh, he's sold out, Is this. And they don't understand all the, yeah. all the fake stuff and all the bootlegging and all what I have to do. Like at yeah. the end of the day, this is a business and I use it to provide for my family, right? Yeah. And for me, it's like... I'm going to support anything that I believe is authentic and is true mm. to me. If you, if you show me love, I'm going to show you love. I don't give a fuck what's going on with anything yeah. else. You know what I mean? But 100%. I got so much hate from getting my products on skins. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and, 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 and then the same thing happened in Hollyoaks, right? So when, when, when Hollyoaks came out, and funny enough, it was the same T-shirt, the one you're wearing, <laughs> the blue one. That was that that was in Hollyoaks. <laughs> and that was on uh you know um on skins as well. But I just remember at the time a lot of people like on I remember going on the, you know, uh Dogs on Acid, you know, like the forums and stuff. Yeah. I just got so much stick. You know, oh, you sold out. Did you see it on Hollyoaks? Oh man, I can't wear that. I'm not wearing yeah, that. That's mad. It's like they are saying, Did yeah. you see it on Hollyoaks? Like as if yeah. they wa- they fucking watched the thing. Yeah, they're watching it themselves, but it's like, you know, they well, when something becomes popular, it's like almost as if, oh, it's dirty now because it's been on mainstream TV. It's not underground anymore. You know what I mean? Think the culture in that's changed a little bit more though, Leke. Do you think I mean I don't know. I mean like like street uh, and be- various genres of black music and urban music, yeah. and you know, like the stuff that we grew up on. Right now, it's like so socially accepted. It's 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 <laughs> culturally appropriated now. It's like yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does this account? Does this happen nowadays? Do you think? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, it's it's bound to, isn't it? It's like with, if anything catches on and it's popular. People jump on it. It's a natural thing, you know what I mean? And a lot of the times, most of the people that are wearing bootlegs and fakes of my stuff, they don't understand the story behind it, you know what I mean? They just want to be part of the wave, you know, and they just want to get the wave as quick and cheap as possible. And they don't care, you know what I mean? And that's the thing that hurts me the most because I believe, me personally, if I'm into something and I want to get it, it doesn't matter how hard it is, I will find it. I'll find a way to get it. But I'll make the original thing. Because oh, that's I'm exactly the same. You no, know, that's just what I'm like. Because I will dig and I'll find it. It don't matter if it's. An, I remember like uh, when the Jordan Spice X came out. I really wanted a pair so bad, and I just could not find a pair anywhere in ten. Because I got big feet. I'm tall. I'm I'm six two. Do you know what I mean? I have got size 10, 11s, Do you know what I mean? And I just could not find a size anywhere. And the ones I found, like they were fake. It was obvious they were fake because of the price. And the guy was trying to tell me it was real. And I was like, yeah, no, the no, real no, no, deal. No. it's fine. I'll find it somewhere else. And it took me, I swear, Kels, it took me a year and a half to find an original one that was not a fake in a size 11 and a half. You know what I mean? And even then I was like, right, that's it. Yeah, it's taken me a year and a half to get one, but at least I got one now because I didn't want to rock any of the bogus stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because that's just me. I was like, well, I'll wait until I find the right size because I want to be part of, you know, the solution, not the problem, you know, I'd rather. Oh, but like these stories are, and, and again, right. From a, from a branding point of view, like these, the story of that there yeah. is a, 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 a PR's dream for the brand that you're talking about for the, you know, the yeah, story. Of oh, it's nice. It's high end. Do you know what I mean? I, I yeah. use that as an example because it's. No, it's great. No, it's wicked. It's, it's wicked. And example, I love the fact you know? that there's a journey to every discovery. Yeah. There's a, that you take you remember like when you was like younger everyone was younger at the point where they yeah. wanted something so bad they couldn't afford it they had to exactly. you had to hustle them and, yeah. and do your chores do your work that's get what you mean that's exactly what i mean bro you know it's all of that yeah it's that is that. gone now that is gone now let's be honest a lot of that ethos is gone now it's like i'm getting it now boom 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 I'm getting it right now i'm yeah, getting yeah. it right now yeah I'll but it's two and a half thousand pounds for 150 pounds trainers i don't care I need it. I'm going to get it now. Do you know what I mean? But why don't you wait a week and you'll be able to get it for the normal price or something? It's like, no, I'm not waiting a week. I'm going to spend two and a half grand on it so I can get it now. Mm -mm. It's Mm -mm. that kind of mentality. That's where the hype beast come. That hype beast mentality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
we didn't have that, that kind of that kind of got started though by the the likes of billionaires boys club yeah and supreme and you know all the high-end brands and stuff but it's thrasher, done- well, you know what? i've got a lot of time for thrasher man thrasher yeah. really done their fucking thing and they still on a they, they are a skate brand somehow yeah. they just got yeah. that that yeah, shine they, they've never claimed to be something that they're not they've stuck yeah. to what they're about and i have mad love for brands like that that's like this is what we are this is what we do boom and that's how it should be you know, but at the end of the day, it's like my point is the ones that are successful, they don't care about the hype beasts that are buying mm. the flakes and this and that because they've got a hell of a bunch of money from the the production of what they're doing. So it doesn't really bother them unless it's something like a company like eBay and they happen to have a bunch of knockoff Louis Vuitton stuff. Louis ain't going to sit down and take that lightly. Do you know what I mean? They're going to deal with the matter. But in general it doesn't really affect their business model because they're still making millions and millions. But the thing is like, when you think about an independent brand like me, it's a complete different ball game. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I'm yeah. not in that, I'm not in that, that position where, you know, I'm a multimillionaire, I'm making loads of money. I'm not Virgil, basically. You know what I mean? I'm not Virgil. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just hey, doing my thing from my flat. You know what I mean? And I've had a bit of success, which is good and everything, but I just want people to be more, like more, um, what's the word? More like understanding of what they're paying for and why they buy that and what why they're supporting that. And yeah. make sure that if you really want to support, make sure you support the original thing. You know what I mean? Don't sure. support the fake and think you're doing us a favor because you're not. And and by posting the photos on our page, that's like putting <laughs> that's like putting salt in the wind. As far as I'm concerned, don't yeah, try yeah. And put the big end wearing a fake hoodie and. You know what I mean? Like, and then try and give it like, like you're part of the culture and like you're helping because you're not, you're not doing anything. If anything, you're making the situation worse by doing that. I'm going to throw devil's, I'm going to throw some, I'm going to throw some devil's advocate in. (laughs) And, and, and not, not, not because (laughs) I believe that. (laughs) And my clause is not because I believe it's right, but, but there is, um, right. Okay. The, the commonality between this and uh, you know old kind of platforms like LimeWire and, right. and apps and shit, they, they yeah. run parallel. Outloads. It's like yeah. it's like if your tune does really well on LimeWire and everyone rips it, there's the theory yeah. that everyone's going to come to your live gig. It's not always the case, doesn't, right? Doesn't but work like that, though, does it? Yeah. Doesn't work like that. Yeah. But but I was thinking, you know, cultural appropriation. You get you get right. uh, the Kardashians, for instance. Right. They'll rock a they'll rock a Metallica. Um, Oh no, they'll they'll rock a Metallica Ride the Lightning album cover t-shirt or something. (laughs) And people immediately they're just like, a woman, for instance. Yeah. But but it's a knockoff. Yeah. Now, does that help or hinder Metallica and their merchandise? I don't think it matters. I, I don't think it matters because they're doing it from a different point of view. They're doing it to be like cool. It's like when you see these kids that wear Ramon shirts and they've never heard of the band. They don't know. Any, they've never played the music. They don't know anything about how the band came together. They don't know about, you know, maybe the drummer killing himself because of depression or this. They don't know about the yeah. article deep shit that's going on within yeah. that band structure and what they represent. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But they, it's, just, it's just cool. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's, it's a similar thing. It's like, you know, they just, they want to be a part of the cool, but they don't really know about, you know, what, they represent. That's why it's so important to know what you're representing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you want to represent something, then you need to have an insight into why you're representing that. Why, why are you wearing a Ramones t-shirt? Well, I don't know. I saw, you know, Kylie Jenner wear it. So yeah, 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 I'm wearing yeah. it. You know? It's like, do yeah. you know who the Ramones are? Do you Have you ever heard their music? Do you know how they got formed? Nothing. So... So there's that yeah. generation, isn't there? That buys it. There is this, here's a burgundy one because... Yeah. Um, it's uh, that toxicity, and I'm not saying it's, you know, people are entitled to rock a, a, a Metallica yeah. knockoff in a TV yeah. show as much as they can. Speech. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, so, and, and in equal measure, like, dude, like, for, for someone in Hollyoaks to not know what Junglist Movement is, but to wear yeah. it in the show, it, it helps Absolutely. you. Absolutely, but, totally. but, but the toxicity of not knowing actually runs deeper than just the, the, the T-shirt and not knowing the names of the songs, because... What that? What? And this is only from a podcast point of view, by the way. Because <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, I run this in my head all the time because, 
we have these conversations and I feel like, man, if somebody thinks that the sex, drugs and rock and roll does not lie in a local rock and roll dive bar or a live right. venue, or but it it survives on yeah. the fake T-shirt that you're rocking and you think yeah. because you that you have that, you, that is defined yeah. as sex, drugs and rock and roll, there is a bigger long term problem. Yeah. That, that, well, this is what I'm talking. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's there's levels to this. <laughs> you know what I mean? For real. <laughs> For real. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that. You know, and uh, and that's what it is. I think you know it's very easy to jump on a wave or something because it's trendy and this and that. Yeah. But it's the same with like you know jungle drum and bass. You know, everyone moans about oh we don't like this guy working with. How can Sigma work with Take That? That's selling out. This and that. Da, da, da. But I don't buy into any of that, you know what I mean? It's like if, if you know, a lot of the time it's like there's people that do certain things for certain reasons and that's down to them. But instead of like, why don't you look at their body of work as a whole and not just one single that they've done, just mm -hmm. because they've done a track with Take That doesn't make them shit producers. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just because Sigma have done the track, with, so what? So that yeah. means we have to disrespect all their body of work because they've done made a move like that. It doesn't work like that. But well, you know, people, if people got things to say, something to say about that sort of thing, they I'm okay. Kind of so that. you know, they Sigma people. take an L once, and then like four years yeah. later, you've already forgotten about it. This is what I'm saying. You know, you can't just put down the rest of their body of work because of one thing that a bunch of people didn't like for whatever reasons. You know, everyone is you know, should be able to have the freedom to do that. I think you know, and the thing mm -hmm. is, a lot of people forget. Like I'm. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a producer. I do not run a record label or this. I look at things from a fan as a as an artist that, that actually yeah. buys music. If I yeah, if yeah. I like something, like I'm not into downloading, I'd much try and find it on vinyl or CD. That's just my preference, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if I'm gonna buy into something, you better believe there's a reason why I'm buying into it. You know what I mean? What um, I think I think I know the word for this, Leke. Like, yep. eh? <laughs> it's cultural currency. I've been using out kept Keller, you know I've been using that term for <laughs> how long now? A good few months. <laughs> Since, I got it off you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the new lit now. That's what we got. We got cultural currency. We haven't got the big money and the corporate dough and the this and the PR team and the lawyers, but we have cultural currency because what we do is authentic. It's not being faked. No one's putting a gun to our head saying, you got to design this. Design this. No one's doing that. We're doing it from the love of our heart. And this is what we do. And that's how you got to be as an artist. you got to be true to what you do. Right? Fucking love it. Love yeah. it. And it's like, I don't give a fuck about the people that are bitching because I, I did a collaboration with Hospital Records or because I'm working with this person or because I got my clothes on skins or Hollyoaks. I don't care about the haters. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I'm still representing the real. And I'm trying to take this to a worldwide audience. I'm not the kind of dude that like, just wants to sell a couple of T-shirts to his mates and just have a couple of his mates wear it in, in the studio and oh, look at us and take some pictures for Instagram. No, this, this, this is a bigger, it's a bigger movement. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, for sure. you know, I want to be like the Russell Simmons of this shit when it comes to like aerosol, the music side, the, the production, the garments, there's a lot of different stuff going on. It's like, it's not just about a jungle moving t-shirt, you know, we create events, we do collaborations with, you know, we do, we work with big, artists we work with big companies and they respect what yeah. we do you know what i mean and uh, as far as i'm concerned it's still authentic every part of it is authentic because it's like we ain't trying to fake nothing just because the stuff has been on, on tv and films and stuff like that doesn't mean we're not hustling what we what we do to to our audience you know it just so happens like mainstream pick up on what we're doing that's excellent that's a good thing you yeah, know what i mean for sure you, you know that's what you want that's what you want. I don't want to be like this this little tiny niche little thing that hardly sells any units. I, my my brand as a whole, from the get go, I've always sold more abroad than I have here. From the that, birth, but that's brand. when you know you're winning, right? So there you go. So that's why I'm just like you can say whatever you like. I don't give a shit. I've yeah. got a worldwide fan base, and more people abroad buy into my stuff than the UK. So I must be doing something. You know what I mean? So that's what that's what it's all about. You can't. You can call it selling out and call it whatever, but it makes no difference as long as you've got a fan base that get what you're doing, and you're saying staying true to what you do. You're gonna last. That's why I'm still around twenty years later because I've never tried to perpetrate the funk. I've never tried to shove it down people's throat. I've yeah. never tried to like, oh yeah, I'll do 
250 colours. I've never tried to rinse it or or taken advantage of a situation when I could have. I could quite easily have done that, but I've always remained true to myself in terms of how I can control it. Yeah. In, in where I can, I want to grow naturally and I want my audience to grow with me, you know? And I think that's what's happened. That's why I'm still here is because I've, like, the model is still the same from the get-go. Yeah. That's the motto, man. You know, authenticity is is certainly the the the, the word I would now. Let, let me just re- let me just reverse engineer a little bit because I'm about to drop a bomb. All right, the people <laughs> don't know about this. Oh, there we go. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me get my mask because I think it's gonna stink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go. I'm about to jump a bomb move. All right, let's do this. I'm black, I'm black. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. Now. I'm Come on, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I've had Joe Corey of Asian Provocateur, Charlie Jago. I've yeah. had the hated skateboards. I've had Alice Vandy. I've had Dr. The Dons. The Dons. I've had enough people pass through, but there's one. I've got Billionaire's Boys Club in a couple of weeks time. Okay. There is, there is one thing though, that no one's ever said to me. Yeah. You've said to me. What's that? And when you told me, I was like, <laughs> what? You... Don't use a computer. You draw. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> By hand, you oh, draw. Oh, you're going to put me on blast now, Keller. I thought we were cool, right? You're going to put me on blast. <laughs> Incredible. Like, no, the, bro, yeah. this is like leak. Like, if yeah. you're talking about authenticity in this motherfucker, right? My sketchbooks. Crazy. Right there. Crazy. Right. Okay, let's, you know what I mean? It's just, I just draw stuff. I just, Anything that comes in my head, you see, I just put there. Look at that. Money, power, respect. That's a good slogan. I just this is what 20 years does for you, baby boy. This is what 20 years is about. 20 years in a game. You know, I draw things out like this. This is a collaboration, you see, with um, Insane Skates, Jed Wells, hand drawn. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Fire. Down here. (laughs) Real talk. I was trying to find uh, this little. Tiny thing that I had. That I, yeah, this is it. Wicked. I'm so glad I found it. So when I wanted to do my tribute for YSL, yeah. this is how it started. This is exactly how it started. Can you see the ASL? Sick. <laughs> Pen and paper, right? That was it. It's as simple as that. That's all it was. I just drew it a hand and I was like, right, I need to clean it up and make sure it's straight. And that's it. Pen and paper. Ever. Mad. Mad. And the next thing, how's what that must be like feel so liberating that you know within the skill set of your bare fucking hands by the end of it yeah. you've got yeah. s- I don't know fucking 150 pieces <laughs> that are ready to sell and you're just you, you did it from from source yeah no I love that feeling like everything I do comes from you know my head to pen and paper you know what I mean even the name of the brand and changing mm-hmm. names I had to yeah. change names like around you know 2000 you know, I, I started off as, excuse me, Outrage Clothing. And funny enough, Outrage Clothing was just basically like a brand, just like ripping off corporate logos, taking the piss out of corporate logos. Hmm. So I had four designs. The first one was the NBA logo. That was um, tagged to NBP, Natural Born Players, right? Hmm. Then I had the Weetabix logo, which I'm sure you've seen, Norm Rock. This is so it, this is so 90s Ray Flyers, yeah, isn't it? Proper 93, 94 shit I'm talking here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tag that to Need a Fix. And then I had the the Boots logo. Tag that to Roots. Then I had the hip hop, you know, the hip hop ad, uh, advisory. Tag mm-hmm. that, retag mm-hmm. that. And so that was like I had like four or five designs all based on corporate logos. Do you know what I mean? And then wow. one design that was original, and that was the Jungle Movement design. And it just so happens when human traffic hit me up, that is what I sent them, the four designs that I had at the time. But it just so happens the Jungless Movement one was the one that resonated, you know what I mean? Because it got mm. more shine in the film and that's the one that everyone picked up on. But I had, yeah. I, I had a bunch of other designs in the film as well, you know, that, and those were all like, you know, corporate piss takes because that was rave culture, you yeah. know. Yeah, I used to love. There's one thing I used to love oh, about the rave culture. Kind of, was that. kind of that, you know. What I mean, so that's how I actually got started. I was like, let me come up with a, like a funny kind of piss take on corporate logos because I saw I saw the Fox logo based on the Ford logo, and I was like, wow, that's so dope. 
That like, shit was so fire. Yeah. Clean, you know, it's that, and that's real 90s. That's that's like one of the first things that I saw that I was like, look at that, man. It says fucked, but it's the Ford logo. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but not just that. It doesn't say F-U-C-K-E-D. It says F-U-C. T, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T, you know? Was like, oh, that's so cool. And uh, so that was one of the first logos that I saw that really resonated to me because I was like, wow, that's really cool. I wonder if I could do something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? For real. And I was like, oh, look at that. Boots. It's the same logo, the same style script, and Boots is British. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to do my own version of Fucked. And that's yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Out. And that's how Roots came out. If you look at the Roots logo, it's exactly the same as the fucked logo with the Ford logo, the blue, the navy with the white. Same thing. You just blow my mind. That's how that came along, you know? Just little things like that, you know? You just wow. make reference to things that played a big part of what I do. And it's the same thing with, like, you know, when I developed my women's wear line and, um, you know, my kids' wear line, I was like, oh, I, Fat Farm, Baby Fat, Aerosol, Baby Soul, you know? I, I love that, your thinking, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just like... I just create my own world based on things that influence me, you know? Babe influenced me from the early days. I was like, wow, I like the fact, I like the way he's got his little sleeve logo with the little ape on there. I was like, that's really dope. I'm going to yeah. do that. I'm going to have my sleeve, but it's going to have my logo on there. Yeah. But it's reference it. That ref, that's, that's where that came from. That reference Babe, because I was like, I was really into Babe in the 90s. Do you, know like, also, do you know what also? You know, also used to smash it is extra large. You know the Beastie label, the, the the Beastie Boys. Um, they started thing. everything, really. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Totally. I mean, you know, like when you go back to that era, Kels, it's so much good shit, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so much good. I was, For real? I, I was like a kid in a candy shop in them days because there were so many like wicked brands and street cultures and just like all the New York stuff, Triple Five Soul, Mecca. Oh my god! And, yeah. You know, we go even further back to Carl Khan I and all that kind of stuff. It was just like, we haven't, we never had that in the UK. We have that now, yeah. bruv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was coming in abundance. Up. Yeah. We have, come on, every artist has got their own label. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They've got their own clothing label or their own merch line. But when I was coming up, there was nothing for the ravers. There was flary trousers, tie-dye clothes, some fluorescent shit. Maybe then, naff naff about and then, it. And then on the other end, it was Versace, Machino, yeah. high end stuff, loud yeah. prints. You know what I mean? You know all about that. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, so yeah. It was like, of course. What about the people that don't want to wear flurry, fluorescent shit? And what yeah. about the people that are not necessarily can afford Versace and stuff? Do yeah. you know what I mean? So my whole thinking was like, I want to give something for the ravers, you know? So it's like, this is for you. Right, so when people see it, they know what you represent. It's like going to a, a club, an underground club. You know what I mean? Like going to a BDSM club or something. You know what I mean? It's like you ain't, you know what I mean? you're gonna get the seats up in there, and the, you know what I mean, and the diplomat. Yeah. You're not gonna get like you know, like a raver randomly. You know what I mean? It's for it's a specific genre. It's a particular type of people that go to that underground club. So yeah. That's what I wanted for like that particular, the Jungus Movement design is an exclusive club for those who know. See, and that's what I'm talking about. Like it's, the, it's for the early adopters, the taste makers, the people, like people, exactly. I hate when people use the word niche negatively. Niche is so, like it's, it's international. You, yeah. you can have an international niche. You are flying, bro. Definitely. And I like the word urban. I don't know why people are like hating on the, I've always loved the word urban, but for, yeah, yeah. as we've gone down the line, it's become a bad word now. But I'm, yeah, like, no, I'm all about it. I'm like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm still going to use the word urban because I love it. And it describes what I'm doing. It's yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't mean that, oh, I just make clothes for black people because I don't. And I do not market my brand like that. My brand is marketed 100%. in a universal way. If you see my marketing and my branding and what I do online, you will see this is open. This yeah. is like a universal project. It's like, I'm a black designer, but I'm not just making clothes for black people. That's bullshit. That's not what I'm about. Like, now, wanna, and, and this is the thing, like, it, 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 mu music and music and fashion, they go I like the anonymity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember, you, 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 I love the fact that you can't, oft, often it's like good music is good music, doesn't matter what the yeah. fuck you are behind it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's one of the beauties of music. When you hear it, you just get it, don't you? It's like because yeah. you haven't got 
you don't get sent a package with the the photo of the person that's made it, how they yeah. made it. This is the samples. This is where they got the strings. This yeah. is you know what I mean. It's none of that. You just hear it, and it's like, oh, I like it, or no, I don't like it. It's too distorted, yeah. or it's too it's too wishy washy, or whatever. It's like it's first impression, isn't it? It's totally. like it's first impression, and it's like totally. Bang. And if, it, like, if, if, Goldie, if Goldie does an alternative album that has nothing but string quartets and blah, 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 yeah. blah, I'm still going to check it. Because it's Goldie, you know? Because it's Goldie. It's, 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 it's like, do you know what I mean? It's like, if, you, if, you're, if you're into a particular artist, you shouldn't be afraid to diversify with them. Do you know what mm. I mean? And it's like, you know, I have to, sorry to bring it back to me because I can only speak about what I do. And Come my, on, you're podcast, you know I mean? baby boy. Come on. <laughs> But it's like, you know, when I did the design with the chick that was covered up in the tattoos and she had the jungle movement top, like... That's right. Um, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you've seen it. I mean... Yeah, of I course. Love, I got, again, I got loads of stick for it. It's degrading to women. It's this and that. I had people inboxing me, too afraid to, you know what I mean, to, to post their comment. They say, no, this is degrading. Oh, it's disgusting. Their boobs are out. Oh, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Because it's like, if anything, this is empowering women. Because yeah. she is the one that's put herself in this position because she wants to be, right? So if yeah. anything, it's empowering her, right? And so for them to say, oh, you don't represent women or this, it's absolute bollocks. Because if you see my website, you will see women artists on there representing. You will see there's stuff for women on there. You will see yeah. when we market the clothes, we market women in there as well. So I get a lot of that sometimes. Like, oh, you know, it's sexist because, you know, her boobs are out or whatever. It's yeah. just ignorant stuff like that. But for me, it's like, no, actually, it's not. It's like, you're looking at this the wrong way. This is empowering her because of mm. how she wants to present herself. Yeah, so, and I feel I feel like, again, you, you know, your moral standpoint, it falls in line with the THTCs of the world. And, right. and you know, these brands that are, are, are ever diversifying and working with the, 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 the you know, the social climate of, of, of what's relevant and what's important. And right. I remember when I saw that, I remember when I saw that picture. I didn't think any. I mean, maybe that's just because I, that's I get that everyone's different, isn't it? And you get it. You're an artist. You got yeah. Tattoos, you know what I mean? It's no big deal. But look at it from other people that are just you know. Obviously, that's you know. To me, the only people that are hating are the ones that lack confidence in themselves, and they need mm. to get down to the gym. You got a problem with that? <laughs> you need to get down to the gym. Simple as that. You have an issue with that, then get down to the gym. Simple. You know, Bro. I don't keep it moving. Because that's yeah, yeah, not insecurities. Yeah, not yeah, 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 us, yeah, yeah. You know? Fashion, fashion does ho- take a lot of flack from uh, from does. certain fragmented, you know, uh, s- scenes. Like, you know, it's not scenes. Where am I coming from? I you feel like music, music business or like the industry as as the fashion and music industry in, as a, as a collective. You know, like yes, all that listen and. And the wearers, basically, you know, there's like, you know, the fashion industry does get a, a bad rep for that because there's a lot of the times where it's like, you know, you're trying to do something positive, but people take it a different way. This is a yeah. perfect example. The example I gave you with the chick, yeah. with the tattoo, yeah. because for me, like, it's it's not what people think it is. It's actually the opposite of that. Like I said, it's more about female empowerment than anything. Mm. I've got no tattoos on me. But yeah. I really it's a tattoo culture and it's a big part of what we do. You know, yeah. I love all the West Coast LA stuff. You know what I mean? That influenced my brand. You know what I mean? I always said, you know what? I want to do a, a design, something like the tattoo, the guys that have tats can rock and be proud of. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's right. Like, yeah, this is me. i got tats. You know what I mean? So even the model had to be one of my boys that's covered in tattoos because it looks dope on him and it fits yeah, it. It's got to fit the, it's fit the, the, the grade, it. right? It's got to fit yeah. the grade. So it's like, for me, it's kind of like, you know, I want to do things that is a bit outside the box because I yeah. don't want to be, you know, pigeonholed. Because I, I do get yeah. pigeonholed because of this whole jungle movement thing because it's such a successful design and it's the one design that everyone knows me for. Mm. But I've done so much more and other stuff than that. You know what I mean? That a lot of people don't get to see because, you know, the hype over jungle movement takes over that. You know what I mean? But I think if you're... If you're like someone that's followed my work from early, you would know that that I do like there's a, I do a bunch of different stuff, and it's not just catered towards jungle. My brand is not just catered towards jungle. You of know? course, of course. Lifestyle. 
it's a lifestyle and it's, it's universal as well. So it's like, I don't know why more people abroad relate to it than the people here in the UK. But what I find is I have a bigger fan base abroad than I do here. And I'm I think cool. it's just taking a slice of the, the, the culture of his, you know, people are owning a, a, a top. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a relevant item that people, that they take ownership of. Right. Like I am this, that's, yeah. That's what I get from clothing, and that's what I really dig. I, yeah, and I think I think it's one of the last standing uh, uh, purest forms of of of, of messaging and and, and yeah. public statement. You know, you don't that's get like that with tattoos. Things. Just tattoos. Just like with tattoos, it's self. It's the form of self expression. That's yeah. tattoos is another part of that fashion. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's like this is how I express myself. Tattoos, yeah. and, and whatever. This is is self expression, and that itself is fashion. So tattoo is fashionable, believe it or not. So you may look at it and be like, oh my God, but the roots of it is it's a fashionable thing and it goes hand in hand with the culture because it's a form of self-expression. And anything that's self-expression, in my opinion, is art. Yeah? Yeah. If you're sitting there going, it's not even in tone, but that's art. That's fucking art, mate, because I'm expressing myself with what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. it's that even if I'll tell you another thing as well, Keller. If you go into a gallery and it's fucking whitewashed, there's nothing on there, and there's just like a frame, and on that frame it's just one little dot, and they're saying, Yeah, that's and it's like, the hell is that? There's nothing in this room, it's completely blank, there's a frame and it's got a dot on it. But it's art. Hmm. The artist can explain to me what's that dot doing there. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Art, if you can explain why that dot is on there with nothing there, then it's art, right? Yeah. If you can't Thousand explain percent, why it's there or what you're doing, then it's not art. You're just, you know what I mean? You're just a madman doing some mad shit. But if you yeah. can explain why... And I, I think that's the, that's the deal with like really good marketing spins with things, isn't it? Like yeah. that whole... I mean, it does fall back to that. What would be the equivocal of a meme of the '90s was defacing the, the a yeah. classic brand and making it and changing the words into your own thing. Yeah, yeah. And That's you have these. Thing. There's these windows of this, and again, it goes back to that whole sigma. That whole that okay, they did this on a record, but who cares? Because you know, like five yeah. years from now, that yeah. that promotional bit yeah. of propaganda that That's that helps. was. It sells and you live yeah. on. And, and I guess that's the secret to good branding, right? Definitely, definitely. It's like, for me, I'm not afraid to like, you know, do stuff that's a bit out of the box, you know, because I'm confident yeah. in what I do. And I'm, and I'm in a position now where I know that I've got a brand that's respected in terms of cultural reference, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, mm-hmm. like cultural currency. It's respected for that. Now, it's not respected as a brand that's got loads of money, that's off-white, or BBC, like you said, or this, but it has got cultural currency because it was it was at a point, it, it launched at a point where this whole thing happened in terms of a movement. And it kind of oversee what would happen. When I came up with Junglist Movement, I didn't think it would become a movement. I just came up with it because I was like, you know what, I want something for my ravers to rock, something mm-hmm. they could be proud of, a secret club that's just for us. It so happens, like two decades down the line, it has become a movement. Yeah. But originally, the, the jungle's movement, the movement part of the design is the movement of the decks and us just moving in a rave because you're moving to the music, aren't you? Uh, it was nothing about, oh my God, I want to create my own movement. It wasn't about that, but it has become that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's, it's gone full easy. cycle. Yeah, it's very easy to come up with something and not have a specific thing for it. But mm-hmm. later on, it actually ends up making more sense than what you wanted originally, right? Again, synergy taking its turn and doing yeah. its thing. Doing its thing. You let it, you leave it in God's hand and God's, God's like, this is a movement. Let's, this is an actual movement. Like it, it, when it, it was just a design. And for me, it was just like, yeah, we, we're going to have some garms. We're going to flex in the rave. We're going to look different. We're going to be crewed just, up. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, but actually, you know, it's like, you know, just getting it in that film, helped, you know, getting it in human traffic helped to reach it to a wider audience. And I think even without the film, it would still be a successful design because of what it represents and because it's, you know, it's an original format of what we do as UK culture. Yeah. But the but having it in the film has opened it up to an even wider audience. And that's what's helped make it even more of a movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So, yeah, it's interesting because, like I said, I didn't come up with it to be like, oh, yeah, I want to create my own movement. You know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't about that. <laughs> I, I mean, I think in a, in a nutshell, we've just explained, well, you have just explained the, mm. uh, the, the, the key points in how to create a 20-year-old brand. Yeah. You've done it's, it. <laughs> it's just history. You know? It. <laughs> you know? But I think uh, aside from that, I think to, to, to really survive in this game and to have longevity is you have to have a story, right? Mm. A lot mm. of people that are like, yeah, I'm going to rinse it. I'm going to set up my brand. Everyone knows my music. I've got 2.5 million followers on Insta. So I'll put a couple of graphics on some cheese and I'm gone because I've got the network and I've got mm. this and that. But it doesn't always go down like that, all right? Yeah, because yeah. a lot of the reason is because you haven't got a story. Mm. You're just trying to rinse it because you've had a couple of great pop music or whatever, and you you know you got big numbers. But if you don't have a story, people are not going to buy into it. Yeah, I, or won't I, buy it into it for too or, long. Exactly, or they might buy into it and then they might just buy out of it because it's yeah. it doesn't have a story that they can identify with. Mm. You know, I think if you want your shit to last, you need to have a story that people can identify with. You know, I think that's the most important thing. Wow. Having a story. You can't, you can't copy what this man's doing or that man's doing because that's their story. That's mm. not your story. If you've got mm. a problem with that story, make your own fucking story up then. Yeah. Don't diss that man because he's doing his story. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Saying? That's his story. That's not your story. You got an issue with it? Make your own story up. That's what I say. I'm so, so think, glad you've said that. You know, and that's think, what it's about, you know? Yeah. Separate Nailed yourself. It. You know, like a lot of people have this, this kind of following generation. I'm going to do what he does. I'm going to do what he does. You know what I mean? It's like, no, mm-hmm. you've got to create your own vision and you have to come up with, you know, like everything I do is strategic. You know what I mean? And I try and do be as unique and individual and different as possible as possible you know um, if the print is gonna go on there i'm gonna put it further down what's it look like down there what's it look like at the back why how come no one prints at the back that's actually a cool page you know what i mean i'm gonna put my print there you know what i mean because i you know it's just being different and thinking outside the box and not 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 following what everyone else is doing and that's one thing i'm i'm really proud of like with, yeah. in terms of my brand my brand has got its own identity when you see it you know what it is if That's I come right. up with a design, you know it's connected to aerosol because of the style, the colour. Legacy crew. Legacy yeah. crew in the house. Everything about it is, you know, encapsulated in what it represents. You know what I mean? It's, we're never going to do some weird, weird stuff that's got nothing to do with the brand. You know what yeah. I mean? It's always going to be like what we're about and what, what we know. And I think that's the most important thing, having your own story and being real. Because people can see when you're being real and genuine, you know, people see that, you know, you can't, in this game, you can't fake it, you know, it's very fake funk. Yeah, you can't fake the funk. You can't fake the funk, bro. Where can, uh, where can, where can people check out your stuff? Online exclusively. It's uh, aerosol.co.uk. That's A-E-R-O-S-O-U-L.co.uk or aerosol.com or junglist-movement.com. That's J U L. I can't even spell. No, J U N G L I S T dash movement.com. That's it. Mm. You know, you're going to get my stuff online from my own site exclusively. That's how I like it. Yeah, we got accounts, we got retailers around the world, we got people that stock our stuff. But if you want the original OG, you come to my site. You know, I do. I do what we do for the for the YouTube video of this. What we do, um, I'm, I'm telling myself this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Note to, note to self. Note to self. <laughs> note, to, note to self, Kels. Uh, directly after this, what I'll do is I'll put that 20 um, year anniversary uh, vid up next to it, so people get a real contextualized. Well, put it put it in motion the the, sh- the event itself and what that represented um, at Fabric. And you catch some of the, the vapors of the, the, yeah. the new products that were uh, on show there as well. So and the kind of people that are rep- were representing there, there was a whole bunch of people. Yeah, there. It was so a whole bunch of people. We, it was a great night. Great night. Just before the lockdown as well. How mad was that? Because the following week we got locked down. Before it was lockdown, the last yeah. event I went to. It's the last event I went to. Like, well, I've probably. got that. I've got that archive. So I'm going to throw that in at the end Please of this. All right. Yeah, we send it. But yeah, I mean, everything about me, what I do, what I get up to, my collaborations, it's all on my website, aerosol.co.uk. And obviously, I want people 
to stop buying fake counterfeit stuff. If you're a fan of the culture and you represent this, buy the original. You know, Absolutely. don't worry about the other stuff and don't worry about the politics. Just support the originators. All right. For real. That's it's the biggest. The that's the biggest thing. The yeah. biggest thing I've all everyone take away from it is like if you're gonna the love, care, and attention to these products and this brand and any other brand that's associated with culture, totally. stick by it and and represent it and buy buy legit, buy from the real. Very important because we're a community mm. as well. You know, it's like at the end of the day, we want other things to come through. You know what I mean? Mm. And whoever's coming through after me or whatever, they need to kind of step things up. You know, so for we real. Want, we want to keep the levels high. And we want to make sure that, you know, our community is growing bigger and stronger and developing, you know, because that's For what real. my brand is a community. And the artists that wear the clothes, they are the face of the brand. And there's a reason why they rep it and the kind of people you see repping my stuff. It's a family. Right. I don't give out my stuff to just anybody. I can't do that. My stuff's too expensive for that. Mm-mm. So people might, oh, well, I want one, I want it. It's not about that, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like we've got a bunch of artists that we work with and they're family right? And they represent what we are about. So they're the face of the brand. If you really want to support, then just, just buy one, innit? It's 25 quid. Go there and support. Because and, that's and you can, and, more. <laughs> and you can see those faces on your website as well, the yeah, people that are endorsing. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're all people that have been, like, I've been sponsoring since the very beginning, Keller. You know, people like Omar were the first artists to show me love all the way back in 93, mm-hmm. right? Just before he got his RCA deal hooked up with Omar outside the RCA building in Putney. And he was one of the first people to be like, you know what? I'm rocking this straight away. Boom. And he's, and today in 2020, he's still rocking the stuff. Fine. You know what I mean? Rodney P. Legacy shit. Up. Yeah, man. RIP Ty. You know, Ty was Ty. show us love. He was a big part of my brand, you know? Like in terms of UK hip hop, Ty played a big part of that, you know? And yeah. He, a lot of Roots Maneuver skits, you know that you know how we get down. All these mm-hmm. OGs are artists that we started working with very early on. And we consider them our brand ambassadors because we still kick it today. You know That's what I mean? Why. It's yeah, a family, yeah. it's a community, and help us build our community, man, by not supporting the fakes. That's the bottom line. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's right, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a fucking pleasure and uh my pleasure. Thank you. Bro. For- and I just hope, you know, people will stay on and they'll check out the, the profile piece after because there was there is some golden moments. And I think some pieces that, I don't know, this is like a time capsule. This is like of a yeah. moment. And I, yeah, I just feel like 20 years of any cult, cultural like brand is, especially yeah. from the UK, is like super important. So big, up, big up you, brother. Honestly, you. I really appreciate that. And it's people like you, Keller, that i got to big you up because I love what you're doing, you know, and you're doing it properly. I love what you're doing with your platform. You're dealing with like all the different cultural aspects of what we do whether it be graffiti street fashion or music or beatboxing or DJing you know I love all of that I like the fact that you're not you know segregated it because a lot of the scene things get segregated and I hate that yeah. I hate yeah, it yeah, yeah. And that's why it's like I don't like segregation you know that happens in jungle drum based community a lot as well I like to cover the things that make reference to what we're about why yeah, we yeah. live why we love this culture while we do what we do. Yeah, because for real. it's not a job, Keller. This is our lifestyle. This is what we do. We live this. This so is literally to, what we do here. Yeah, every yeah. day. This is what we do. You know, so it's you, not, you can't take it out of us. This is a shit. This is what we do, you know, like I salute you, brother. I really do. I salute you. And it's like, well, for you, it's in your blood. It's how you live, like you said, you know, it's like it's important. We need more platforms like this. And I really appreciate the fact that you reached out because, like I said, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't know I'm Aerosol or I'm Jungus Movement. Mm. You know what I mean? They just yeah. see the brand and they just whatever. And they, like I said, the artists, they're the face of the brand. And I like it like that. So every now and then it's, it's kind of nice when people reach out and be like, you know what, let's have a chat, you know, especially now that you're 20D, you know. So I really appreciate the support. I mean, you've my been pleasure, a brother. soldier anyway, so. <laughs> no, my, ple- my pleasure. We've been family and friends for a long time. And hope this, I hope... This is as definitive of the moment as we can get it so that, uh, you know, any reference points that we might be missing, that's for the next 20 years. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But the thing is, anyone can reach out to me, Kels. You know what I mean? I answer all my messages. I answer all my emails. You know what I mean? It's like everyone's, if anyone wants to ask me something, like if if, if you talk shit, 
You get banned. Actually, that's a really good point. <laughs> no, no, that's a really good point. I'm down at the bottom of the YouTube. Yeah. We'll make sure that in the in the in the section in the detail section, we'll put your yeah. uh, your details so that people can hit you up. Let's do that. Yeah, and don't forget the website because that is the only place you can get my stuff authorized. We'll make right? sure that's all at the bottom. Forget all bells and whistles. Spreadsheets, spreadsheets, eBay, and them dodgy red bubble places. They, they they are all fakes. All right, I do not sell to any of them. The That's only it. marketplace we sell to is Amazon. All right? Fire. So get on that yeah. website down the bottom of this page, all right? Thank you so much for the time, Keller. My pleasure, brother. Thank you so much for joining us, man. The people Thought. out there love it. Absolutely. Keep doing your thing, man. Doing fine, stellar work, young man. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thank Salute. you, bro. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the mighty Leke from Era Soul, Junglist Movement, Hip Hop Movement. Thank you so much, brother. Don't forget to subscribe, people. Yeah. Killer Hiala podcast, share, do all the business, subscribe and hit that bell button on the YouTube, all right? Stay lucky. We'll see you next week. Peace. Love. Peace. Junglist Movement, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>